I'm Shanna, a third year medical student at UBC, and I do a bunch of different interviews with other medical students and answer a lot of questions on the pre-med journey. Today, I'm really excited to be with Kay Young, who is starting her first year of medical school at UBC and an out-of-province acceptance, which is really hard to get to. So first off, take us through maybe your academic journey from high school to undergrad. From grade 11 to grade 12, I volunteered at my local hospital where I got to um, interact with patients. And since it was a pretty small local hospital, I didn't really have one position, but I was kind of all over the place. I was like chatting with patients. Um, I was helping out with the meal program. I was in the emergency department helping stock supplies. <laughs> and uh, one, of the, one of the times I even got to shadow um, in the OR. So that was really cool. Volunteering, I really, I got to experience firsthand what the hospital environment looks like and feels like and the importance of the collaboration among uh, different health professionals. So that was a really valuable experience. So when I started university, I went to Acadia University and I started as a pre-med, majored in biology and I took a lot of um, interesting science courses, but not just sciences, um, arts and humanities as well. So some of my favorite science courses were developmental biology, histology, and molecular biology. And as for non-science courses, I really enjoyed philosophy and women in science classes. I believe it's super important to um, have um, culture understanding and learn in different fields because that makes you a better rounded person. And I think that's really, that's an important quality to have as a physician. Katie, yeah. and how did you choose it? Were you choosing between any different majors to decide on it? Uh, majored in biology, multiple options because I was pretty set on taking biology. Um, I think I, I've been interested in biology ever since I was little. And I knew that I was going to be studying this. I'm curious because right now at UBC, it's the time for first years to choose their major. And a lot of them were quite nervous. Mm -hmm. about chemistry, biology, microbiology, had half a billion things, which are all good majors. I think biology is a really good, obvious choice. Uh, microbiome, any of those I think are good. And I think in the end, it doesn't really matter. I think kind of going to your point of what was more important was that the choosing the courses within your major that really spoke to you. And then mm -hmm. you know, choosing courses outside of your major to kind of grow and expand you. Classes like for me, like sociology, they taught me so much that I still carry with me today. And so I, I kind of wish that everyone almost uh, in the pre-med journey, even though it's not you know, a classic course to take, would be able to take something out of their box. And maybe not all take sociology. Maybe someone can take you know, a gender studies class, someone can take um, you know, an ethnic studies class, and then come mm -hmm. to class. I did my research in the environmental science area mm -hmm. and I know that a lot of pre-med students think that they have to do research in like medicine related field and when I tell people that I did research in environmental science they're like oh why did you choose that if you want to be a doctor mm -hmm. and like you said um, I think everyone like um, I well I haven't started my classes uh, at UBC yet but um, I think everyone with their backgrounds their unique backgrounds um just amalgamates so well to create like a great community and i can bring like my environmental science background and someone like you can bring your sociology background you can't um separate environmental science from medicine they're not mutually ex exclusive but you can find connections and i think pursuing what really speaks to you and what you're you really enjoy and you're passionate about is important because you can always make the connection with medicine and health and I think it's an experience that would broaden your horizon and you would just get um, so much out of your given experience and your given circumstances. So, I also yeah. have some basic more basic mm -hmm. non-medical research and I think number one my point to I think number one research is so hard to find so for any any at any point if you can't get your hands on medical research any type of research is really good. I would definitely mm -hmm. say. so. Don't limit yourself as an undergrad. And number two, I think as an undergrad, again, um, you don't have a lot of medical knowledge. And really, if it, especially if it's your very first research experience, it's just really good to go in and just learn the skills. So whether or not mm -hmm. that's environment, whether or not that's psychology research, you just want to get in there. How do you how do you write? How do you present? How do you collect data? Exactly. 
involved with environmental research was actually pretty serendipitous. I was in my first year and I was really eager to start doing research. Went up to my first year biology professor asking if there's any like research assistant opportunities. And she told me that there might be like a volunteer position uh, for an environmental conservation research. So I was like, oh, sign me up. I want the experience anyway. So with um, our school's environmental conservation research and I thought it would be like a temporary thing because I was so sure as a pre-med um, and I thought I would eventually do something medicine related but I actually ended up and doing it um, as my honors research. Well my honors research was on the effects of BPA on development and epigenetics of plants. Yeah, I went deeper into my research although my testing like my uh, study species was a plant still learned so much about uh, EPA and how it affects organisms, not just plants, but animals and humans as well. So I could make that connection between environment and human health. Like um, plastic is something that we consume. So it's not just humans that are affected, but it's actually the entire ecosystem. And since we are part of the ecosystem, uh, we kind of affect and we get affected. So I was able to gain that understanding, which I think was really valuable in my undergrad experience. The nice thing to take away from part of your journey was that you were genuinely interested in the project, number one, which is, I think, a really good idea. I like this. I kind of been looking for research and you just went up to your professor. As an undergrad, I didn't realize, like, all you had to do was just ask sometimes. Yeah. It's actually so, I know it's so intimidating. I still remember that. It's totally doable and there's, there's projects out there. I was really um, lucky to connect with um, the former president of my university. Simply emailed him and I was like, like, I would like to meet with you and chat with you because you really inspire me from this speech he gave at this event. So I, I wanted to talk to him more about it. Um, yeah, so it was simple as that. I just emailed him and we met up for coffee and he became um, my mentor. Like they can feel so distant because you're a student and they are professors or they're the president of the university. Mm -hmm. But all it is just to have the courage to reach out to them first. How did you approach that like email? Like what, what are some tips that you would say, like what to say? If like, they're like, I really want to talk to this person. I want to ask them out for a coffee mentorship meeting. What do I say? An email, um, you should probably introduce yourself what you're doing and why you would like to meet up with them. Um, and I think it also helps to show that you have already done some research about them. Like if they're a professor or um, if they're a researcher, then you can you know, find what they do their research in so they know that you're that interested and they would feel more inclined to tell you more about their field, more about what they do and how they can help you. I guess to segue back to the research, how did you end up deciding that you wanted to do an honors project? Was there any decision making involved? After my first year and I worked as a research assistant for two years and in that process I helped out with the main conservation research but I helped um, the former honor students with like miscellaneous stuff like preparing media <laughs> and petri dish so um i saw what they were doing and it was really interesting that they got to have their own project and um, do experiments and write papers and at acadia university we in the biology program we have this course called research topics so it's like a semester of doing research and I see it as like a trial for honors. Like you try this first and if it's, if you think that it's right for you, then you can continue with honors, which is what I did. And I felt that I, I was really, you know, interested in doing research and I liked the field um, of research that I was doing. So that's how I decided to pursue honors. So. Uh, I got to have a feel for, you know, uh, the supervisor, like working with that supervisor and the also the developmental biology field as well. So to clarify, the the supervisor that you had for the first two years, it was a different supervisor and then your honor supervisor, same field, different supervisor? Well, I had multiple supervisors. <laughs> working as a research assistant, um, I had a totally different supervisor and he was a, a conservation specialist mm -hmm. for my uh, research. Uh, topics so like the one semester thing 
Um, I that supervisor later became my honor supervisor, and I also had a co supervisor for honors. Mm. And if anyone's watching from UBC, I think the equivalent of that is what we call directed studies. Um, that would be ISI like four four eight or something like that. Um, cool. So he wants to do that, so I think that's a good example. I think what you did was a really nice flow where you help everybody else out for a couple. Mm. I think. Um, not not to say no one's capable of going in right away, but I think it would be overwhelming to go in right away and be like, here, write your own project, design all of it. Like if you went straight to an honors thesis, I think that would be kind of overwhelming. So I think it's nice mm-hmm. to get a feel f- as you were with helping other people's projects, which also gives you like a sampler of like what kind of topics you might potentially be interested For in. Sure. Mm-hmm. And then I like your idea of trying out whether or not, because like an honors thesis is a big commitment. So I like that your idea of trying it out with the directed studies and then going in with the, because I think the supervisor student fit is like a really important thing. I was lucky that my first supervisor kind of, and I just happened to click, but I think because it's like a personality thing and there's different working styles that it's important to be like, number one, it's don't be discouraged if it's hard to find a, like a supervisor first and then when you get in and the fit isn't quite right and the team isn't quite right, it's, I think, okay to switch. And I would mm-hmm. want to guess that probably your supervisor from your first experience probably is still a mentor that is carried forward. So um, it's not like once you leave their lab, they're not your, they're not your mentor anymore. Whatever section you're watching right now, make sure to check the rest of this playlist or this series. Make sure you check out Kay Young's channel. She has some other tips on writing the MCAT. She has tips on studying and she hopefully trying to, reconnect when august rolls around so you guys should stay tuned for that if you want us to hear other people's experiences in that school and other tips again stay subscribed so y'all get more chances to learn stuff so thanks y'all for watching